And finally tonight, it may not be holiday themed, but France's National Museum of Natural History set up its new exhibit with illuminated giant bugs on display. Massive glowing spiders, centipedes, and even bed bugs because why not greet visitors at the Paris Garden with biodiversity as the theme this season. The museum says they usually make these tiny organisms into ginormous replicas to highlight how essential they are to the ecosystem. And they look pretty beautiful there as well. All right, thanks for joining us. Remember, you can get the latest info at abc4.com. Have a great night. Now at 10, mayhem on the roads. Mother Nature's wintry punch makes for a long drive home across the state. Plus, a community comes together, a group racing against time and the weather to rescue a cat trapped in a drain pipe. And students return to the University of Idaho campus as a killer remains on the loose. How the school is working with students too afraid to return. Live, we're there for you. ABC 4 News at 10 starts now. Welcome to ABC 4 News at 10. I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Courtney Johns. Emily Flores has the night off. Thanks for joining us. We begin with a tremendously busy night on Utah's roads with crashes and slide offs all over the place. Take a look at this footage from Bluffdale on 215. It was captured just a few hours ago. Crews had to shut down a big part of that area to clear off all the cars that had slid off on into the median. And now we're going to take a live look at how it's looking right now. Much better, but you still need to give yourself some extra time out on those roads. Utah Highway Patrol says it's investigated more than 110 crashes as of 10 p.m. And as we know, it's not over yet. Turning now to a first look at the weather forecast with meteorologist Nate Larson. And Nate, we could be in for an ugly morning commute as well. Yeah, we're uh, getting a little, little bit of a lull for a lot of the northern part of the area, but we uh, have more lake effect snow shower potential that we're going to be tracking for uh, tomorrow morning. And we have, uh, again, the snow that was pushing through northern Utah. We got a nice big punch of it to right around the commute time. Some heavy snow came down, really coated the roads, made it slick. It's into central portions of the state sliding south. And so we're starting to see some of the uh, cautions uh, or the slowing on the roads. I-15 as you head south from Nephi uh, into Fillmore and eventually Beaver. So wet roads roads out there, if not snow coming down uh, on the roads currently. And uh, we had, again, a lot of issues near the point of the mountain. We showed you some of the images there. Uh, we've seen some improvement, which is great news. So uh, looking at uh, improving conditions there. I think the computer might have froze up just a little bit. Sometimes it struggles with traffic. Let's see if we can get it going. Uh, here's a look at current uh, storm tracker radar. You can see that we do have pretty quiet conditions now. Maybe just a few flurries here and there across the Wasatch Front, northern Utah. Most of the action remains in the mountain areas as we're still under a northwest flow. Uh, as we put uh, storm tracker into motion. You can kind of see a lot of the moisture's fizzled out. It's in central and pushing south. Central Utah pushing south towards uh, some of the southwest mountain areas. It's also in east central Utah seeing some snow showers in portions of uh, Uinta County and northern San Juan County. Future cast showing that again the bulk of the moisture is on the way out. We've kind of seen the big uh, punch from our storm system initially. Uh, I mentioned the lake effect snow showers is what we're going to be tracking into the overnight hours. So this is about five o'clock. High resolution models picking up on some of that north 
northwest flow could generate several more inches of snowfall for Salt Lake County. Uh, in fact, uh, some models hinting at at least uh, the upper Cottonwoods could see another foot of snow, of snow on top of the uh, about 10 inches that Alta has already received. And again, more snow in the valleys as well. Guys? All right, thank you, Nate. And the weather is causing plenty of concern for a community trying to rescue a cat stuck in a storm drain for days. Community members say the cat they believe belongs to a disabled veteran in Copperton. Neighbors say their cat actually led them to the pipe where they heard a cat meowing. It was kind of like a lassie situation where he came up and was like, hey, someone's in danger follow me and he led us over to where we could hear the cat crying for help. So the fire department has also got involved feeding hoses and food down that pipe, hoping the cat would use that hose to climb out and Rio Tinto Kennecott has used infrared cameras to determine the cat is about 50 to 60, 60 feet down the narrow pipe, which at times slopes down 90 degrees. The company says the surrounding area presents a unique challenge. Uh, it's very uh, steep and, and it's in kind of a wildland area. And so we want to make sure that uh, people that are trying to rescue the cat are safe as well as the cat safety as well. Now people in the community have created a ladder out of carpet and then covered it in catnip and they hope that will attract the cat to the carpet and help the cat realize it can climb out. A science experiment setting off fears of an active shooter at Granger Elementary School in West Valley City today. Around 1130, the district saying a teacher calls police saying they heard gunshots. After placing the school on lockdown, police finding that the noises were from that experiment. Parents picking up their kids say they were shaken, but just glad it wasn't what they thought. As you see police officers and militaries and all these people, it's um, something dangerous is about to happen and the first thing you want to do is get to your kids. Granite District saying they want teachers to feel empowered to call for help if they believe there is danger at the school. The district also thanking police for the way they responded and handled the call. And students are back on campus at the University of Idaho, some spending two weeks at home after four of their classmates were murdered. Students reporting that Moscow campus is quiet. Many of their friends staying home with concerns for their safety with no suspects in police custody. The university is giving students options for their academic work after the holiday. To meet the needs of all of our students, we have asked our faculty to work with their classes to allow each student to complete the semester either in person or remotely. The school says they have also heightened all security measures on campus, including a safe walk program 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mental health services and counseling is also available for anyone in need. A surge in patients, including from the respiratory illness RSV, has Intermountain Primary Children's Hospital delaying some procedures. The hospital says up to 50 will be delayed this week. That's about 10% of all pre-scheduled procedures and surgeries. Now, they are all non-emergency and patients who still need urgent care will get that. So we'll make those changes as quickly as we can. Um, I don't anticipate that it's gonna last the entire cold and flu season, which as you know, really goes into March. But um, the next couple of weeks are going to be rough and we're gonna to have to take it day by day. Doctors at the hospital saying to avoid spreading illness, make sure to wash your hands frequently and get vaccinated for the flu and COVID-19. A pilot is lucky to be alive after a crash landing and a six mile hike to safety in Morgan County. The sheriff's office says it happened yesterday when an 80 year old pilot from Idaho had to make a crash landing. Now, fortunately, he found a spot where there was an opening between the trees. After that, he hiked six miles until he got cell reception and could call for help. It was great to see him just in joking spirits, being able to laugh with him and talk with him and just enjoy, enjoy him because it's, it should have been completely different. That pilot is with his family tonight, recovering from that crash. Well, we made it through Black Friday and now Cyber Monday. The post Thanksgiving holiday shopping frenzy goes back over a century. Craig Worth has the old film, TV ads and newspapers. It's worth watching.
Black Friday became big when you could buy swell new electronic stuff for ridiculous prices at 5 o'clock in the morning on Black Friday. I saved $60 on this VHS remote control VCR. I mean whiz bang, oh my gosh stuff. It comes with its own software. My report's due tomorrow, Dad. Just $9.99. Door crasher, electronic stuff that changed lives. No cord in the way, okay. and you can dial out or answer from anywhere in the house. Even redial a last number call with one touch. Okay, Merry Christmas, Mom. Oh, and uh, thanks for the tie. And can you imagine, no one will ever improve on these cameras, ever. Give Kodak gifts for Christmas, take all the Christmas cheer. Okay, the holiday shopping season did not start at 5 o'clock in the morning in the old days, but it sure did start the Friday after Turkey Day. This is downtown Salt Lake City in 1956, and the shopping madness goes way back before that. In a December 4th, 1904 ad, Arbach stated, Perhaps you haven't begun to think of Christmas yet. Well, how about winter underwear, ladies' union suits for 75 cents, and the doorbuster is a sterling silver thimble for 12 cents. That will get you up early to shop. The store had equally exciting holiday offerings in 1910. Corsets at 59 cents. Dolls are 85 cents. And you want something acceptable as presents for him? A dollar 15 for pajamas? or a 38 cent tie if he ain't worth the dollar 15. There were perky frocks at CCMI and a merrier Merry Christmas. But I think Sears had the best deal. Why wait till after Christmas to buy gifts? Group four coats for 888, whatever group four is. So holiday shopping times come and go, but the rush is still the same, especially before there were malls or the internet. And nowhere were those sidewalks more crowded than here, along 3rd South, the department store district, where you had Keith O'Brien, the Paris, and Arbax on the corner. Hand sewn spring gloves only $1.89 at Arbax Street Floor. Holiday shopping was all done downtown. Grab your partner, turn around, bring the kids, come on downtown. See the bargains all around for prices are really down downtown. Big variety of Avondale sunrise denim pedal pushers, only 88 cents at the Paris. Prices are really down downtown. Shopping in general, and holiday shopping for wicker chairs was really an event. It was big, such as going to Keith O'Brien to get your holiday dinner plates. 53-piece dinnerware service for eight, only $16.99 at both Keith O'Brien stores. Yes, that was 53 pieces. You saved enough to go to ZCMI. Men's sports shirts values to $5.95, now three for $11 at ZCMI. But the announcer thought it was a great price. Remember, greater bargains for you in downtown Salt Lake City during greater downtown days. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Prices are down, prices are down, prices are down downtown. And look at this, a crowd of holiday shoppers at a ZCMI counter. Well, it was a time of post-war bargains. Regular dollar 35 nylons, buy one pair for a dollar, another for only 10 cents at Keith O'Brien downtown. Prices are down. Downtown. Yes, and the shopping season begins again. See a downtown in the crowds. Craigworth, ABC 4 News. Today's retailers reporting deals on socks and large screen monitors still will serve as door crashers. Electronic games always work on Cyber Monday, though it seems the 12 cent thimble we just saw that crashed doors in 1904, well, just doesn't bring the crowds anymore. Sounds like we need a better thimble. Coming up at ABC 4 News at 10, racing against the clock and a new session, lawmakers try to get their work done on time. The key things left to do before the new year. And stunning video from Hawaii. What makes this eruption and the volcano it's coming from so rare? 